Hello everyone and uh, thanks for joining. This is 343 Labs Techno Tuesdays again. Uh, John couldn't make it, unfortunately. And um, it's going to be... Today we're going to be doing the same track, continuing to work the same track I worked on last week. Uh, going to be moving into arrangement and um, seeing what we can improve. Uh, but before that, um, I want to mention that uh, 343 TV is sponsored by 343 Labs. 343 Labs is a school in New York City, Berlin, and online. We have classes starting from Ableton, Logic, to mixing and mastering, and uh, songwriting, composition. Um, currently in Berlin, we have 40% uh, off uh, for the purchases made in August. So even if your class starts uh, in September, which is the case for Ableton One, Ableton Intermediate currently, we have opened up that class as well in Berlin. And there's uh, mixing and mastering and uh, composition. And all those classes are up. And if you purchase them now in August, you'll get a 40% off, which is a great, great deal. The school is located in um, at Riverside Studios in Berlin. Uh, and also, we also have classes open and uh, in uh, New York City, uh, Logic, Ableton, Mixing and Mastering, uh, and uh, Composition. And the, those classes are also available online at the same time. So you can go and uh, check them out. So let's um let's dive into the project. And if you have any questions, um, hey Andrew, uh, please let me know. And um, I have my uh, chat right here. I can uh, answer if I can. I can answer any questions you have. Let's move to the uh, session view. <clears throat> So here's a track we've been uh, playing with last time. Didn't do much mixing or anything. A little, just a little bit. Uh, but uh, let's see what um, what we have here. Let's listen to that. Okay. This is uh, a little too fat. We could uh, reduce frequency here. Let me see how it works with a uh, little kick. <laughs> Thank you. 
bad enough. I mean, we could work with this, but uh, I think I might um, I might see if I have some samples I could use there. Let me go back to this for a second. Basically, I'm adjusting VCF parameters a little bit. a little bit. Um, let me see what I have here. What this is doing. They're already doing some uh, mud reduction here. Uh, this is too much. trying to fix things by adding more and more effects on top of each other and it's like making uh making it worse and worse and like uh more you mix more you think more you spend time with it the mix more you think like oh this sounds great you know and the truth is uh no matter what kind no matter what kind of a mix you have um there's uh more time 
if you spend a lot of time with it, you just going to end up liking it. And uh, there's no way around it other than like trying to rest your ears or use reference or even reference like too much of uh, doing the same mix uh, for a long time is uh, it's not a good idea. <clears throat> Also take out a little bit of low end here. Let me see. Maybe not completely take out. So yeah, I think you hear that as like uh, the crusher. I think we should like just uh, delete this. We don't need to automate it. Just experimenting the previous uh, episode didn't work quite work out. Let's keep it off. With the crusher's nice. It's like really a uh, subtle effect that SH has. It's like adding some sort of crunchiness and uh, high end. A lot of a little bit of high end. And even if you crank it up too much, like it's uh it's not that hard. It doesn't get crazy. But it gets like really crunchy. That trade says, good point, I work on a track for a long time and I begin to hear things that are not there. I think it's good next morning. What What was I thinking? Good idea, but not great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's difficult to, I mean, especially like, think about it this way. You have to like your the music that you're making, right? And um, when you like your music, you're listening to it, like get used to it easier. And like in your head, it sounds a certain way, and it's like bringing you a certain type of joy or whatever. And you, like start liking it more and more and more, and then compare it to something else, or ne take a rest and listen to it the next day. It does like it does it sounds totally different. And that's okay because that's like a um, learning process, right? Like more you experience that, more you're gonna know what, what what to expect and how to avoid it and how to maybe counteract it with uh, the things like um, reference and plugins like Sonarworks, for example. I think this Sonarworks is a plugin that actually I have, I have right here. Well, this it doesn't work with this um, these um, headphones, but whatever headphones I have, the other ones that I use for uh, uh, when I produce, um, these headphones have a special profile. So every, all all the headphones they don't have flat EQs. Like flat EQs are really rare in headphones. They they have this is this shows what what was it was before. What kind of EQ curve my headphones have programmed, like when they come, which is not flat. Like it doesn't have as as much of a uh, like a mid frequencies here. It has really like overdone high frequencies here. And uh, if you mix with these headphones, you'd be like, what am I like? Uh, you're gonna be mixing with these kind of parameters. You're gonna have EQ that looks like that. But what, what this does is like flatten the EQ. So it looks more flat, much more flat like this. Like lower end doesn't really matter here, but then it kind of like flattens it as much as it can. So what you're listening to is the perfect like balanced EQ. So you don't have to worry about the extra stuff. And even though you have that, it's good idea like Let's say you're working on a track, right? And you, you want to get it done. You're feeling the track. Like sometimes it's not an option to like go to the other track and work on the other track because you w would rather work on this. Well, in that case, it might be like good idea to have like headphones like that 
with the sonar works. Uh, the monitors, studio monitors, switch from monitors to headphones, and then you can even switch the sonars, sonar works off and see how it sounds like in your original mode, the headphones that have like this EQ curve, crazy EQ curve. But what you're doing is that you're trying to like find a middle ground, even though the headphones like uh, have this curve, the music that you like, that you listen to always sounds okay, right? So your track, even though you mix it perfectly there, should sound okay in these headphones because there's millions of users, uh, listeners that have different kinds of headphones and eco curves that's why it's important to like go from one device to an another and then when you're done uh almost done you know mixing and master at the mixing, mixing and mastering stage you just go and like test your track to send your track out to your friends and uh test it in a car test it in the mono on a mono speaker of some sort like a bluetooth speaker you know or uh, like um google Google Assistant device, you know, those, those are pretty loud speakers, but they're just like one speaker, right? It's not stereo experience. But it's important, like very important to make sure your mix sounds good in mono as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the question, guys. So let's see how the uh, 303 and SH-101 work together. Well, we have a, a LFO here set on trim for some like uh, movement. Uh, I'd like to uh, reduce the depth a little bit. I think it's too much. Maybe offset a little bit. Lower. And uh, we can we can improve tra transients a little bit here, the 303 uh, with this with this beef. has a cut mode which softens the sound. See how much softer it is. It's gliding. You could, you could even use that. There's too much I think. It's cutting too much. Out, uh, non transient parts, so it's like more substantial.
there's too much compression. and make them blend together you realize that like whatever you did some of the stuff you did in like arrangement mode or while jamming it's not that good anymore it doesn't fit and um what, what you're trying to blend sometimes some sounds like this just don't go like no matter what you like how they sound how the good they sound separately they just don't go in certain tracks and that's what you gotta be like aware of that like sometimes i was like when I started producing, I had this, um, I was using massive and like, I was going through this, like a lot of sounds. Uh, so I had a melody set, for example, and that was going through a lot of sounds, right? And most of the sounds didn't fit. And uh, I didn't know much about EQing. I mean, I did know basic EQing and stuff, like it was 10 years ago or more even. So I was like, um, I was getting so disappointed by these sounds that it wouldn't go with what I wanted, wouldn't go, wouldn't go, wouldn't go. I would just look up these presets and this just like, sometimes I would arrive at this like perfect sound preset, which would like, uh, I would have never thought of making that sound. Um, but that's, that's, the, that's a good part about having like a lot of presets, even in like, uh, in um, SH or Jupiter and like, 
there's a lot of presets here. Like these are like techno presets specifically. Roland has a has specific uh, presets for uh, a lot of instruments for like techno. Um, I don't know if I, uh, there are other genres, but it's really go good to go through the be able to go through presets really quickly. Let's try to do that with um, with either Jupiter or uh, or Juno, and see like again like we're in the we're in C. So like I was doing before, I would be using a sequencer like this one. Let's see on Juno, and trying to like this is an arpeggiator, uh, Max for Life arpeggiator. We could also use that. Try to see like just experiment and see what comes up. And uh, if we can't find anything, then I have a backup plan for that too. So let's see. Let's uh, listen back. Listen to this uh, a little bit again. It sounds really smooth. It has some character to it, you know. Motion. What does it need? Let's see. Let's see. Let's just start experimenting, I guess. of what uh 
kind of movement we have here in terms of like uh, the skate here, uh, an arpeggiator. Let's see. LFO, that's an audio effect, hold on, max audio effect, or the instrument, MIDI effect, yeah, LFO, yeah, I still, I have it in preset, preset so I should probably jump that, Nice, Andrew. Uh, yeah, 106. Also, um, uh, Abe was talking about it the other day. Uh, he was talking about this, like, the modules that you have in, uh, like, modules or whatever they are, like, fuses that you have in 106, and they they, they, they go bad on every 106, so uh, every time, every time, I mean, uh, every few years you have to change those, and, but, but 106 is, like, that makes it kind of unique, and like, if you have one fuse uh, not work and the others work, it just like makes different sound. Like it's, the, the, the thing about analog is that like it, every analog instrument sounds different, even though it's the same model. Like unlike these digital ones, they're like they're all gonna sound the same um, because they're like just models and they don't have this kind of um, analog thing to them. Let's see. Hold on.
Sí. Sequencers, Vex uh, for Life, Bass Sequencers, they act very odd, and sometimes they just don't um, do what they're supposed to. Like th this case, I think. So I think, no. So what I did was wrong, was I, I grabbed this uh, MIDI and I dragged it back and I didn't mind the arpeggiator which I should have they also recorded the note like so we're all good here just have an 8 bar we could record of, uh, in this kind of case I only want some variety like at least rec record like eight bars and then like you have this kind of like variating uh, velocity here and note length and everything and it's like really interesting to listen to even though it's just one note and I'm not even changing sound that much right <laughs> and partially because we have a uh, fixed time delay the shorter the note is delay you can hear. So when the note is longer you cannot hear that much of a delay. Like in this case you can hear it's like more hitting. You. But when the uh, note is longer you can't hear that much of it. It is there, it's in the background, but uh, it's not like getting in the way. Let's see what we can do here. 
Professor is really good in Ableton. New Ableton Tenet came out.
turning it a little bit. Very good. Let's see if we can like make a more subtle compliment sound. Like that. This sounds pretty good.
instruments if you really like them you gotta save those presets right like i still have it here i could use it for something else but obviously it didn't work out for this uh, particular track but uh we spent a lot of time uh polishing everything and like uh gluing them together uh we haven't even started um arranging yet but this is kind of like a more in-depth look of how i uh how i produce and uh it's sometimes it goes quickly sometimes it goes slower and uh the important part is that you always learn and whatever you do you pay attention to what works and what doesn't work and especially if you're like uh able to uh figure out stuff on your own the path um uh, that you have to take to figure this stuff out is always uh very very useful and educational and um uh, you get a lot of uh, a lot out of it learning on your own um and exploring stuff that uh you haven't seen on youtube for example even me talking to you like okay i told you this stuff but you could also try other stuff like for example let's say plugins that are meant for mixing only whatever like you could use them creatively you could automate stuff there and it's like uh not to the extremes obviously but like um uh, i had an instance where i used like soothe on a snare was it a snare? I think it was a snare on the other track, and um, it was like I used it to the extreme, removed a lot of frequencies, but then I added a lot of effects after that. I brought out the whatever it was left, and it sounded really cool, like really unique snare that I had never heard before. Yeah, so Golfos is basically um, knows the way the brain is making sense out of sound and um, that's the way it's reacting to whatever signal it's getting and the parameters that you're using are designed to increase like listenability like whatever they do they make more sense to the human brain obviously like there's too much or too little uh, i mean you cannot hear different sometimes at all but depending on what you feed it right and then you you can recover and uh tame the sound at the same time and it also has the slider uh let me show you let me show you here slider um to boost which increases or decreases the uh low end but it doesn't like directly decrease is it difficult to explain it doesn't directly do that but it like makes make it makes it feel better let's see if i can demonstrate on on a kick here right, i'm gonna have it here so like let me reset everything here high end if I 
that much. There is it's still there. I think uh, higher frequencies are coming up. If I do the other one, other way, increase. Makes it punchier. It's like this is what makes sense for a human brain. But increasing low end means to the human brain. It, it, the whole spectrum. I have, you can exclude frequencies. Or limit like this or something. But then you can tame it a little bit more. Tight. And make it a little darker or brighter. Darker. Recovering at the same time. And then if you want to balance out recover and tame, you have this bias. It's tame focused whatever sounds good that's the thing these you have few knobs very few five knobs right just tune whatever you like it sounds right do let's see very little difference makes more tight it makes it feel better look it's tighter Obviously, we have like decay here, uh, decay for ba bass. I mean, kick drum. A little bit less here. Get the idea. I passed. Blues. The spiff, yeah, spiff is like transients. Makes it even brighter. Bypass. And this is what it's adding, actually. If you, if you, if you uh, select Delta, you can hear what it, whatever it is doing, audition, whatever it is doing. So it's adding a good amount of signal, right? It sounds great, though. It really sounds great. It reduces the. Um, Shakiness. Well, yeah, I've seen this, these uh, with these um, these two, two of them, and, like let's see what Sooth does in this case. I know we're over time here, but uh, let's, uh see what Sooth does here, quick. Can reduce a little bit of mud, in the low end. We don't need this here, uh, but yeah, you can see like literally what it does. This is better. Actually, if we put Sooth before Spiff, I think that would make more sense. Let's see. See? Sense. It's pretty good. So thank you everyone for joining again and uh, 343 TV sponsored by 343 Labs. 343 Labs is a school in New York City and Berlin. We have a special discount going on in Berlin until the end of August. 40% off on any class you purchase in August, even if the classes start later. And uh, we also have online classes and we also have NYC based classes. Please check out 343labs.com for more details and uh, we'll see you in the during the second week of September. We're going to launch a new season, likely to have uh, some giveaways there, so keep an eye out, uh, subscribe to our mailing list, and we'll keep you notified. Thank you again for joining.